welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to try to do a little experiment here. The stamp, this was part of a stamp sketch video, but it really wasn't a stamp sketch. It's, I don't know, kind of more of a, just an experiment to see what this uh, pine bow would look like in white pigment ink on a, this one happens to be a glossy um, chrome coat, dark blue, it's real navy um, cardstock here. It's almost black, huh? I mean, even sitting here right in front of it almost looks black. They don't have this navy blue. I bought it on sale. Oh, I don't know. It must have been 1994, I'm guessing, way back when, on a blowout clearance. Um, but they still have, you can still find glossy black cardstock in, I don't know, just online. A lot of places sell it. Um, okay, so like I said, this is going to be an experiment here. I'm going to try something with, oh, I don't know, to put together some sort of a, you know, general scene here using the snowy covered bridge. Let me just get my bearings here and figure this out. Okay, let's go about right here with it, okay? Now here's the thing, we're stamping in white, okay? So it's going to be a reverse ad impression which, I don't know, I, it works with some imagery, like it worked with that pine bow just fine, but when we're dealing with something that's been defined as the exact opposite, okay, so my lightest areas are going to be the, the side of this bridge, right, the covered bridge, instead of it being the darkest, it's kind of weird. So it's just a different look. Um, maybe it doesn't translate so, you know, well, but let's just give it a try here. Um, there are certain things that we can do to alter it once it's been stamped out. Um, mainly, I was thinking about putting some highlights on that rooftop, but I'm not sure. Let's let's give it a try here, and let's see what we can come up with here in terms of a, uh, I don't know, some kind of composition. Okay, so... This is the Brilliance Moonlight White. If you haven't gotten one of these pads and a black, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> It'll open up all kinds of possibilities as far as... If you've been a stamper for a long time, you have things like vellum, foils, star dream, iridescent types of papers, just things that you just cannot stamp on with normal inks. This thing opens up that possibility with all of that existing media, you know, dark blue, glossy cardstock, it's going to open up so many different avenues. And it, this, this ink, I don't know, it's, it's water-based, so you can just clean it off with water. It'll air dry over time, okay? Or you can heat set it in like five seconds, okay? So, I don't know. It's not... These inks came out 20 years ago, so they're not the most popular thing out there. A lot of people have never even heard of it. I barely used it until last year. I had a dried pad sitting probably in my shelf for 15, 20 years, and just, I don't know if I ever used it, but man, it is insane how many different things you can do with it. Uh, I'm not affiliated <laughs> in any way with uh, Sukineko, the brand, okay? But I'm saying this because I don't find them being sold in too many different places, okay? A lot of people have never even heard of it. That being said, will it be around for a long time? I have no idea. They said, I, someone said that it was discontinued, so I kind of panicked and wrote to Sukaneko directly in Japan. I just said, you know, off their website, and I just said, hey, I, I heard these inks might be getting discontinued. They said no, but if they're not being sold, and if a lot of people don't know about them, I don't know if they're going to be putting them in production and sending out a large shipment to their, you know, distributors around the world. I don't know if they have worldwide distributors or just there in the U.S. or what. Uh, let's use some fences here, okay? Let's come out this way. But anyways, that's my, um, that's my, uh, talk on 
brilliance pads. You don't have to get like 10 of them. I have black and white and some of the uh, metallics. Um, it's like silver and gold. Uh, but the ones that I use the most are black and white. Okay, so adding this fence here. Kind of continuing on this um, slope right in there with that fence coming out this way. All right. And let's see. Um, maybe we can add a few trees over on this side. Okay, now this is wet. All right. It's not like a stays on or something like that that's going to dry instantly for us. So, um, you know, you can take your time doing this. You can also, you know, you can clear emboss this too if you want to. If you want to maintain the uh, the white look of it, you can you can emboss this uh, these images. Not that one. That one's you know been dried for a while, weeks, and uh, I don't know. You can do all kinds of what you do whatever you want with it. All right. Um, I don't. I think silver would look kind of cool, or glitter or something like that. I need to get into embossing. Yeah, that's the thing that got so many people into stamping in the first place was embossing. Um, it was the kind of killer app application um, early on in stamping. When people saw what you can do with embossing, that's that was the hook. They became rubber stampers after that. After that, it became more of um, stamping up or something. Those types of things that got people into stamping. They go to a home party, but embossing used to be big. One of the things I do, kind of as far as a little technique thing, I can kind of tell which way um, the cardstock's kind of wanting to bend. Okay, so as I'm heat setting it, what I might do is I might just kind of counter bend a little bit. If it's blowing out one way, then just kind of counter bend it a little bit and heat set that way. And then move your gun around so that you're not kind of focusing it um, to extreme a heat in any one area for too long. Kind of keep it moving like that. Now, you know, I have a kind of a tendency <laughs> wanting to focus it in on the areas that are um, really thick with ink and because I want to get it done, but sometimes you know, it's better just to kind of do it and uh, Do it slowly. Okay, just testing it right here. I uh, mentioned in past videos I have a hard time telling when the white dries because it doesn't look too different than when it's been when it's wet uh, unlike black which is really quite apparent when it's um dry because it dries much flatter looking than um you know, the glossy appearance when it's wet. So, just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so let's go with some background trees over here, okay? <clears throat> and I'm thinking the pine row, I guess, All right? Here's, I'm gonna show you something I'll do as far as a technique goes. This is what I do when I stamp these in a dye-based ink where they're, the trees are darker, okay? Let's try it with the same technique here, but with the opposite value of white, okay? A light impression on dark. Well, let's see if I could do this. I, I haven't done this too much, but I'm going to try to blot off some of this ink off the bottom. To me, pigment inks are really similar to paint. Um, so, and it's like, you know, blotting off paint in many ways. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm transitioning. I'm trying to transition transition this from wet to medium wet to dry down here, okay? So just kind of observe it. You can kind of see it on the image. You see where it's, there's a lot more ink up top there and then it, I don't want to just go straight. I'm not trying to just, you know, chop that off. I'm trying to transition it down here. Now the reason why is because I want this to kind of fade out as it goes around that fence. I mean, I, I can mask off that fence too, but I just don't want kind of an abrupt um, ending to the base of the trees, okay? Um, I think that just, it's the difference between just stamping it straight, which I think is fine, but it's the, one of those little refinements like that. It's kind of going into the shadows in this case. When I'm doing it with um, darker inks, it's transitioning and going into a lighter one, so it kind of fades out, so it looks like there's fog at the base of it. I don't know, maybe that'll look good on here too, I don't know. Oh, okay, so that's, that's, that's good. I got it this time. See, 
and then we have this nice light fence, right? If that um, tree behind the fence was that white, it would kind of obscure that fencing down there. So you get that oscillation going from light to darker to light again, like that. And it's a, just an easy process of just kind of wiping off your your uh, ink off of there. You gotta, I don't know, I and mean, it's not hard. You just, you gotta get the hang of it a little bit. Okay, let's see, which one of these fences is... Okay, it's this one. I'm going to continue that fence right here, down. And let's see, I got a new... This isn't new, I found it. I, there's some, a lot of good things about kind of tidying up your area, but I found I had this kind of longer um, acrylic block. I need to apply some uh, tack and peel to it, but... Let's see, let's take this and let's go down here. This isn't exactly, it's kind of the opposite. They have some open rungs there on this fence and it really goes the other way, but I think that's going to be fine right there. Actually, see that right there? I need to throw in a, another rung right in there and we can do that with a white paint pen too. Okay, so let's see here. This is coming along pretty good. It's, it, I'm not going to fill in here too much. You know, I mean, that's what I usually do. I usually stamp things out, fill it in with a little bit of tone, be it dye-based inks or colored pencils, alcohol markers, etc. But uh, on this one, we're going to keep it fairly simplistic because of that reversed out imagery in there. Okay. Now, see, I, I don't. I can put some other trees over here too. Maybe do it in a lighter tone. You know, maybe wipe off a lot of it and have a, a, you know, but I think I want that, I want to keep that kind of open space in there for that, uh, they call it negative space. Okay, let's see, before I heat set this, let's see um, some additional texture. Let's see, I got some black on my rocks right here. Let me kind of blot that off a little bit. This is the tiny rock stamp and it should... Uh, just gonna fill in this area like so. Okay. Now I'll put some out here too. I'll kind of carry out the um, the imagery of the uh, covered snowy covered bridge into the surrounding area. See, it just kind of transitions it like this right down here. And there it kind of filled in that area. Okay. Um, okay, here. I was going to heat set. I'm kind of used to doing heat setting in layers, but I'm not really layering too much here, so I can just stamp everything out and then, and then heat set afterwards. Okay, let's go with... Uh, Now, I'm stamping this on a glossy cardstock. You sh this should be able to work on something like a matte cardstock as well. And then you can use your, you know, your regular oil-based pigment inks, you know, Versafine or, you know, whatever you use, Hero Arts, Unicorn. It will look a little bit different because um, matte cardstocks or papers or whatever are absorbent, okay? So I'm not quite sure of the... Um, the opacity and uh, value of your white ink. If you're going, if you're going in this reverse fashion, okay. Um, value in terms of light and dark. Um, sometimes it might look darker. Okay. I don't know. It could it could look lighter too. I don't know. I guess it depends on brand and such. Okay. All right. So this is just filling that in like so. This is like perfect for a word stamp right in here. Um, I'd really like to do some splatter painting on here too, but uh, huh. do I do that before or after? That's the question. So, in the woods, we return to reason and faith. Yeah, this is a wooded area. It's not the wild or something like that. But this quote right here, I mean, it fits in here pretty well from a thematic standpoint, but it also fits in here perfectly from a dimensional standpoint, so 
uh, I'm not going to put something like, a, you know, a, a sunset quote or something like that, but, um, you know, sometimes you just go with what fits. And I've created these uh, scenic sentiments in different um, kind of dimensions, and, uh, you know, some of them are kind of more vertical-based layouts, and some of them are elongated like this, um, so that, you know, we can kind of decide after the fact Okay, so that fit right in there, don't you think? <laughs> it's that kind of narrow little area. It looks like it's kind of, you know, it was designed for that space, or the quote was designed for that space, or the space was designed for the quote, actually. Um, but I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay. I don't know, this, this is looking pretty good without any, you know, kind of additional tone on here. If I had some space in there, I'd, you know, I'd do my kind of rip paper towel clouds in here. But I, I don't know, I think it might clutter it a little bit right now. <clears throat> I usually try to stamp everything out, then I kind of blend it together, but I don't know, it doesn't really... It doesn't really need it on this one, I don't think. Okay, so... Um, let's add in some snowfall in the form of the bleed proof white. Okay, for those of you who are tuning in, maybe for the first time on this video, um, I use this bleed proof white all the time. And okay, so I'm just going to ink up, load up, paint up, whatever, just the tip of this. Okay, you don't need a lot. All right, so I'm just tilting this and I'm dipping in that front end of it. Okay. I mean, it's not precarious or anything like that. I just don't want to get a lot of it because I'm not going to be using a lot, okay? And then you just kind of... Um, get the excess off just by kind of wiping it on the side of the bottle like that, okay? And then when I do this, I don't just spring load it like that <clears throat> kind of um, instantly, okay? I'm just going to be... I'm just kind of releasing a couple hairs at any given time, okay? So, what that looks like is this. I'll do, watch my thumb here for this first one, okay? Okay, and then it's going on to the uh, splatter painting down there. So I just, I don't know if you can barely see my thumb move, okay? So let's do that again. But you see that splattering down there? I mean, it's almost done in that area. I don't want a lot of it. I mean, you could put, you know, a lot if you want to. I mean, I'm not, I don't want it too much around that quote. I could cover up my quote if I want to, but... I think I can control this enough. See, I'm just barely letting go of uh, the bristles, okay? I'm just going to spring it back, and let's get a little bit on that uh, quote around the quote, okay? Let's put some down here. Believe it or not, this is adding depth <clears throat> to the scene because the snow is now this textured pattern of these little white dots are the thing that's... Uh, Things that are closest to us, so in a sense, we've added a lot of visual depth. It could represent things that are far about off in the distance too. You have <clears throat> snowfall near and far. I mean, it could be, it could, you know, it could be some stars in the background too. All right, and that's it. Okay, but look at this right here. How much water you add to the uh, paint? It changes the kind of the spray pattern. I don't get it all the time, like consistent. I like the, the variation of kind of the larger dots and the smaller dots, though. Okay, so um, I like that variation of dot pattern from large and small. You know, the larger ones kind of represent something a little bit closer to us, so uh, I don't always get that in a random kind of process of a splatter painting. So I go in here and I add... My larger dots um, manually, like this. Oh, okay, now going back to my fence down here. Now remember, this, some of this is still wet. I haven't heat set yet. Um, I'm just going to add in, there's this other fence rung right here. I'm going, to, I'm going to put in another fence post like that. That'll match up that other one kind of a little bit more closely. and. I'll just kind of attach those like that. 
It doesn't exactly match, no, but I don't know if anyone's going to notice, okay? But that's not a part of it now, okay? This is at arm's distance. You'll know <laughs> from watching this if you're hung in there uh, this, at this, to this point in the, uh, the video. I'm going to put some little bit of snowy kind of highlights. I don't, I don't know if they're going to show up, but yeah, okay. Show up a little bit. And the top portions, though, I don't know if it's going to show up too much, but this acrylic paint pen is um, more opaque than the impression of pigment ink with that tree. So these show up a, a little bit here. I can put some highlights on our branches and pine cone here too. Sometimes when you're stamping kind of with a thick paint too on this surface like that, you get that little kind of removal of uh, ink. It kind of, it doesn't fisheye, but it kind of vacuums. So you notice right here, those pine cones are supposed to be solid and filled in, but you know, we can just take our Q-tip applicator, get some ink on it like that, okay? I mean, maybe it's best to kind of heat set this first, but we can just go in here like this and just kind of fill that in like this. No problem, okay? I mean, I don't know, you know, how much, the, you know, Tsukaneko anticipated this type of application <clears throat> of their inks, but the fact that it's just uh, able to um, dry on these non-porous surfaces really kind of opens up, like I said, the possibilities. And they were just thinking that, okay, people can, you know, stamp, you know, have a, have a, a pigment ink that will dry on what most people are using, uh, white, glossy cardstock, okay? I don't think they were thinking about white on black, you know, dark, glossy, or something of that sort. Okay, so let's add, okay, maybe I should heat set this right now, but I'm going to add some highlights on top of here. Okay, it's not adding on because um, this is really wet. So if I heat set it, it'll dry. I'm, I'm kind of dabbing wet into a wet impression still, so let's heat set this, but I don't know. I mean, it, I think it's just about done. And then we can just put it car uh, format it into a card. I probably over, you know, dr heated it, dried it, but no problem. This is pretty thick. If you're doing this on something like, you can do this on foils too. If you use it on foils, just kind of really watch your heat. Don't kind of have it in one area because foil, I mean, it's metal, so it'll start to kind of pucker on the surface a little bit and give you a little bit of texture. But, um, okay, let's see. Just testing. Like I said, it's hard to tell when this is dry, but yeah, it's pretty dry. I don't see it coming off, especially around my... Nah, okay, that's a little bit wet still. Okay, so I'll be just be careful about... Well, let's heat set that, I was going to say. Let's just let this set up for, you know, another half hour. All right, I think that should be it. Let's format this now. Okay. I think that's pretty dynamic. And it's pretty much just the impressions, okay? And then some splatter painting. Okay, now here's what I was thinking about doing. I was thinking about kind of masking this off and making that rooftop lighter. Um, like light is coming from above, but it's already reversed out. You know, this should be dark, right? But I think it looks pretty good as a reverse impression, so... Gosh, it doesn't even look like the same image in some ways. Well, it's the opposite, right? Okay, so... Oh, okay, let me test one more time. If I'm going to uh, be applying some adhesive to this. Let's see, maybe a blue star dream border around it? Or let's go with... I think let's just go with the, uh, the white around it again. Okay, so I'm just giving this a really thin border, okay? 
and that kind of picks up the you know the the scale of the snow you know the width of it and whatnot all right let's get this just kind of braired out this <laughs> I'm gonna go fairly gently still just in case some of that I didn't dry completely I think it's pretty dry though yeah it didn't feel like anything stuck to that okay I'm just eyeballing this I'm not measuring I could I could make this thinner but let's just go with the uh, the dimensions of the uh, the paper the eight and a half or well 11 inch length and I'll just try to roughly get this centered like that okay I should start using a paper trimmer but when I'm doing things like this I I might not have got the uh, the measurements exactly so I'm just kind of going from the base of this mat so it probably gives me a little bit more of a I don't know kind of a compensated border around there that's true to my eyeball dimensions of the I don't know what I don't know what glue to use don't you know you don't want to ask me that there's probably you know 50 better types than this one if this one's even been sold at all Tombow mono aqua okay I don't know it works for me though um, but it's also the only glue I think I had in my supplies I don't know if I even had Elmer's okay so I'm just adding these um, where a, a crystal's going to go okay so we have that snowfall in there little dots but I thought it'd be kind of neat from a textual standpoint to have these little little twinkly kind of light reflective types of elements in here and it'll it'll just give it some added dimension um, which is a lot of fun uh, they come in different sizes. I need to wash that off. I have a bunch of glue crusted on there. I haven't. I forgot about that. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to get in here without uh, picking up like eight of them. Okay. Let's see. Let's go there. You can kind of hold. Sometimes you kind of forget where you put the glue, but if you hold this at an angle, see. All those glue dots right there you can see where they're all one two three there's another one right there and there's that crystal that's what that crystal looks like there i think it's really effective in terms of a oh a design element um design embellishment okay yeah there's one more kind of hidden amongst the branches Okay, let's see if I got it all. Yeah. All right. Make sure this is closed nice and tight. You don't want to be picking up those types of things. All right, let's see what we have here. In terms of our finished piece, I think I'm going to have to do this thing more often because I think that's a really fun composition right there. Or just... I'm more technique. I'm going to have to do this technique more often. Look at those little stars in there. Aren't those really fun? Let me see if I can get this without that glare. But see this? Is it kind of twinkling in there? It's like at some angles you can't even, you can barely see them. Then you turn it into the angle and it kind of lights up. So it's kind of like here and there, here and gone. So like right in there, you know, right in there. See that? <laughs> All right. Uh, reason and faith in the woods. We return to reason and faith. We have our impressions here. A little bit of a recap. Straight impressions using the um, the brilliance. Moonlight white. Okay, you can just stamp it on there. Heat set it. If you don't have like the brilliance and you're doing it on a glossy cardstock or a foil, okay, I think this would look really cool on something like this too. You know, if this was stamped in white over that or on green or red or whatever colors you have like that okay if you don't have that then you just you stamp it out in white and then you emboss in clear or you stamp it in 
um, something and then you emboss in white. Use detailed embossing powder. Though it's going to look a little bit different than this. It might look really cool. You can use um, glitter embossing or something like that. Can you imagine that for some of these trees? Maybe the, the foreground ones. Maybe you don't treat everything identical. You know, maybe you just you emboss in stages or something like that. It wouldn't be bad to have that quote there in like a silver or something like that. And I think that would look interesting. But if you're using the brilliance pads, you you know, you're given a choice. You can just leave it as is and do whatever you can do. Brilliance pads, heat set, and then have like maybe these trees embossed in, you know, regular pigment ink and then have those rays so it seems like something closer to you. I think something like these bows right here and maybe the fence here, the closest things to us, those would look really good embossed so that it's actually raised and maybe that would give even more visual depth. But this is just a really simplistic um, application of this type of look right here. And again, for me, you know, I really like those little stars up there. I think those really add in kind of a nice additional um, detail that I think the recipient of your cards would appreciate. And if you're giving your cards to someone that doesn't appreciate your work, then maybe they get, you know, a more simplistic version of this or something like that, or, you know, they get a store-bought card or whatever, okay? But this is all really easy to do. I mean, this is my first time experimenting around with this, so I'm not like an expert in this, but things like this little um, splatter-painted white works. People have used other things like correctional pens and just splattered like that, you know, before, and that's kind of that Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White is kind of similar to um, a uh, a correctional pen type of, um, I don't know what you call it, paint or whatever in there. It's real chalky and very um, opaque and, and dries very quickly. So um, you can try something like that. But uh, I don't know. I hope you try something like this out if you like this look, of course. And uh, I hope you enjoy it in terms of a process. I certainly like how this one came out. And it, I don't know, it surprises me in some way. I thought I would have to do some additional, like, snow banks or something in here, which you could do, but it, I just, I don't know, it didn't need it. So that's uh, the kind of one of those things that really surprises me. So fun stuff, and always exciting to find a kind of a new, or, or a twist on a technique. You know, I've done reverse impressions before, but I don't know. This one's a little bit different uh, in terms of... Uh, I don't know, kind of how it was approached and kind of what we, maybe it was defined more on what we didn't need to do, um, perhaps. Okay, so thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks as always for tuning into the Stamscapes channel.